Mr. Sullivan. And, uh, and, and of course, is Mr. Jackson, I presume. That's me. Yes. So, greetings from Scottsdale. Oh, good. Yes, I'm in uh, Scottsdale at the Andaz uh, Resort here, getting mm-hmm. ready for, uh, I have an email mastery workshop that I'm doing with Joe at his office uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. So that, that's going to be fun. And where are you? Our, our, I was just reflecting on our expanding global network of like-minded creative people that uh, we're part of. Yes. Isn't it amazing? I was uh, more, yeah. more and more so. I'm, I'm noticing a resonance, you know, meeting people and say, and the person that you meet knows four or five other people that you know. And it's yes. an interesting, interesting thing that um, um, I've been more and more aware of it over the past year than I had previously. Yeah. I start, I had uh, my GoGo agent. Uh, annual event in uh in orlando last weekend and i met uh chris McAllister, who's in uh, Mm -hmm. 10 times uh Mm -hmm. 10 times program what he's a very sharp guy really was Mm -hmm. excited to uh to meet him so you're right it is a small world yeah i was in detroit on thursday uh wednesday evening and thursday and i was a guest speaker at the uh, conference of all the EOS entrepreneurial oh right uh, nice uh, operating system uh, yeah. implementers so 250 mm-hmm. of them and of course with Gino Gino Wickman Gino <laughs> who's in the game changer with you and you and me and also uh, Mark Winter who's also yep. in there and then um, Mike Payton who's the overall head of the EOS organization he's in my ten times program. Uh-huh. And then there's a growing number of their implementers who are in uh, Strategic Coach. And I had five of them up on stage as panelists. And I went through the complete who, not how model. Mm-hmm. And then um, at opportune times, I would stop and simply say, well, uh, CJ or Jill or Alex or Mark or Ted are going to uh, tell you how this actually works in the EOS world Mm -hmm. as as an EOS implementer and also uh, what it would do for the best of your clients, uh, clients who use the uh, entrepreneurial operating system. And at the end, I said, well, I just want you to know that we're making a commitment from the stage here that... uh, the moment that someone comes into strategic coach, we're going to encourage them to um, um, use the op- entrepreneurial organizing system for uh-huh. their um, for their company. Yeah, and uh, we feel that if they immediately do that, then the delegation will be much better. They'll be much more protected, and that the who not how concept and strategy will be easier. Um, for them to um, make rapid progress with. And, yes. Um, so our goal will be to keep them for 25 years, and if we keep them for 25 years, you'll keep them for 25 years. Yes. That's so, so great, that whole, yeah. yeah. That, it, it, when you're finding, I think this is what's really um, helping, is finding people who are thinking in frameworks. And are, you know, setting things up that, that just, you know, blend in complementarily to, um, you know, to, cause I look at this whole, all the strategic coach mindsets, the, everything about it, you know, there are, uh, if you have that as a foundation, all the things like, I look at the breakthrough blueprint, I look at that model, the eight profit activators as something that blends perfectly with the, with that model as well. And Mm -hmm. when you've got a framework like that, um, 
all these things just start falling into place for uh, for people. It's so it's so cool. Yeah, why don't you do all, a spotlight at the game changer? Yes, all these collaborations. That's really what becomes the the possibilities yeah. no, here. Why don't you do a Why don't you do a um, um, one of our spotlight presentations of the eight um, profit? Um, yeah, operations. happily. Yeah, yeah. No, I would love to. That would be great. Would uh, uh, April be too soon? Uh, April might be too soon. Let's do uh, July. I'll do July for sure. All right. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Yeah, because I'm going to be, uh, I've got events all between now and uh, April. But I read something, and I may have uh, shared this with you, because it's been coming up again and again now since I um, saw it. We may have had a conversation about the McKinsey study on design, uh, but I'm not sure that we have. I'm not 100% sure that we have. That's not ring the bell. Okay, perfect then. So this was really interesting. In my More Cheese, Less Whiskers podcast world, I often come across people who are designers, you know, people who who have um, you know, a, a background in design and often high-end uh design. And I, you know, we've always known like intuitively that design is important right that it, you always feel better when things are uh designed but i always look to have people create sort of quantifiable proof of that you know like to be able to show like what is the return on design because i always look mm-hmm. at, at things like that and um mckinsey actually I, I had a designer on the the podcast who did high end um wine and spirits uh label and packaging design and they um as when i did that episode uh somebody contacted me emailed me right after it and you know just the week before i had done it mckinsey had released a a big study that they did on the uh, actual return on design, the the monetary effect of design, and you know it was a multi year study looking at um, you know thousands of companies over several years, and what they were looking for was um, what was the economic impact of design led companies is what they called it, and they what they found was that. Um, <clears throat> companies that they graded as design led were had a 32% more revenue premium over their non design led cohorts and mm-hmm. returned 56% more money to shareholders than mm-hmm. the non design led companies mm-hmm. so here's and you know you got to like mckinsey has a reputation of being you know, really like um, quantifiable, like depth of of understanding of things, and so mm-hmm. for somebody like McKinsey to do a, um, you know, what Peter Diamandis would call it's like above the super credibility line, right? For for somebody like McKinsey to come out with an idea like that, and uh, so it really it, it made me think about the. Um, you know, the position of design in things and that often that's one of the things that sometimes gets um, not overlooked, but, but not optimized with a, with an 80% approach. And so part of it, what I wanted to think about, because you, you really, I would say that strategic coach is also a design led company in that everything Mm -hmm. about strategic coach is very, um, you know, has been consistently, um, designed include the environment, the, you know, experience, the, um, the look, the colors, the, the, you know, standardized kind of design Mm -hmm. of it. So I'd love to hear your, your kind of thoughts and approach to that because, Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I think it, it's really now, now we have quantifiable proof of how important it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I can say, uh, you know, I mean, I can just um, talk about um, uh, three things really quickly. Number one, that the first um, uh, staff member that Babs and I, um, I actually hired was actually an artist. It was a, mm-hmm. you know, he was a com- early computer artist. Um, and so, I mean, you know, you talk to entrepreneurs, who's the first person you hire, and they say a secretary or something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But ours was actually an artist. And uh, number two is that I had developed some role model companies that I thought were great design companies. Um, um, starting in the 1980s, um, you know, if you go back to the mid 80s, and um, one of them was um, um, Apple. I thought Apple was an extraordinarily well designed company and seemed to really use design as part of their uh, marketing, um, you know, their ma- marketing thrust as a company. And number two would be Starbucks. I thought Starbucks right from the yes. beginning had really, really great uh, design sense. And um, and then in uh, in a completely other field, and it had a lot to do with our travel travel habits back in the 80s with the Four Seasons Hotel, who I thought had a very consistent uh, mm-hmm. des- design. And uh, at that time, we were going to Canyon Ranch, uh, uh, for the first time, and I felt that those four uh, companies seem to make um, they seem to make design a really um, you know a very very important factor in all their communication and you know just how they treated you and just how they mm-hmm. uh, created an env- environment around you mm-hmm. and uh, and so that's my second point uh, the role models and number three is that um, within the first year of the strategic coach program, we had already established a range of colors, uh, typeface, um, how a, everything had to look with, uh, look a at. Style I would guide. say, yeah. and I would say 30 years later, uh, it's what we established in, let's say, 1990 is still, um, still true in it. 2018 that were absolutely still 80 per, 80 percent consistent with what we established 29 years ago and uh, you know and i had uh, just had to finish off that so, so there were three things one <laughs> that our our first uh, first person was an artist number two i had role models number three we created a framework um a design framework right away and i i would say this that um, I've noticed the opposite, Dean, that people who fool around or don't pay attention to it tend to be always fighting against themselves uh, with trying to get their message out because they mm-hmm. keep showing up in it. They keep showing up in a different form. Yes. I agree a hundred percent. And you look at, you know, you and I have had conversations about our, our joint love of Helvetica as a mm-hmm. simple, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> that, that's, <Yeah. laughs> that's, and I mean, we, we laugh about it, but that is such a simple choice that, uh, you know, we should probably let people know about the movie. There's a, a, a documentary called simply Helvetica. And the whole documentary is about <laughs> the the font Helvetica. And what I yeah. really found amazing, it was eye opening because it was right around the time that um, you know I was really kind of getting into the these timeless things. Like you, you're one of the most impactful things that uh, has happened in in strategic coach um, for me in a workshop was when we were talking about influences right and everybody was sharing like what are they influenced by right now and it was all contemporary people it was all things that were going on right now and then you know you said you were talking about bach 
and Euclid and James Madison and, uh, you know, all these things that Shakespeare. were Shakespeare. Shakespeare, <laughs> yeah. Hundreds of years old, right? Hundreds of year frameworks that were uh, that were there. And that, that movie Helvetica came along at a time when, uh, you know, you hadn't, I didn't really realize how timeless uh, a font Helvetica is. And, and in watching the movie, you know, them showing all the companies that have, you know, that use Helvetica in their branding. And one of the most amazing things was you talked about, you know, your, everything was strategic coach looking just as, as contemporary today as it did in 1990, uh, that your, uh, they showed the all the all the airlines that had changed and had to update their logos from the the seventies uh, all the way through, and the one airline that hasn't changed a thing is American Airlines, and their mm-hmm. font choice is Helvetica, and mm-hmm. I thought, you know, boy, there's such a um, there's such an interesting um, wisdom in that. And it's hard to really make things look bad if with mm-hmm. the right, you can, there's nothing that you can't express with Helvetica. Yeah. Because of the yeah, range. It, and it's a, it's a really uh, interesting thing. And then, uh, you know, on Kindle, because I, yeah. read, you know, I, uh, um, all my travel reading is done on my, my Kindle. So uh, there yeah. are, books that I read, but I wouldn't take them with me on a trip. I would, you know, read them at home and leave leave them here. But, uh, but on Kindle, sometimes a story, you know, I'll download a book and it'll be presented to me in a type um, other than Helvetica. And I I immediately am jarred by it because I said, oh, this is going to be hard to read. So I go to the uh, font choice, and there it is, Helvetica. Yeah. And I switch, I switch the type to Helvetica, and immediately it's easy for me to read. Now that, um, you know, I mean, that may only because I'm, you know, I'm used to reading Helvetica, but um, um, you know, uh, it's hard. Uh, it's hard for me. I have to work harder to read things that are in other type fonts. Yes. I get it. And that's so just as far as readability, everything like that, that, that really goes a long way. So that saves that, com, that jives with the 80%. I, w- um, I would love to uh, approach uh, at some point to get a hold of this McKenzie, um, this McKenzie um, report. That would be um, very useful information. Yeah. I will forward it to you because it's really, um, yeah, it is fascinating. And, the uh, you know, they take a, a holistic approach to what they define as design led and meaning not just the visuals, but the actual mm-hmm. user, user experience and environment of everything, you know, that the actual um, experience is mm-hmm. outwardly focused, like l- looking that it's easy to um, and relaxing kind of thing to, to use. Yeah, it was interesting because uh, we started off with a um, self-created logo uh, back in the 1980s, and it, it was kind of an interesting. But it was kind of an interesting um, logo, but it was kind of uh, dated. We noted about 10 years into it. Now, this wasn't the font you know that we use in our print materials we were we were helvetica right from the beginning mm-hmm. but uh, we had kind of hooked ourselves on on um on a logo type and um you know for example uh i can give you some famous logos that are never going to change because mm-hmm. they're just totally known and one of them is coke you know the coke yes if you, if you think of it you know, the, it would be uh, suicidal on their part to right. tamper with with that logo. It's it's instantly recognized. So I would say Ford, Ford of all the automakers, has stayed with their 
over a hundred years, Ford has stayed with, mm-hmm. the, you know, that very, you know, scripted Ford, yep. and it's known ev- everywhere. Uh, Disney, Disney has mm-hmm. a particular logo, and you don't fool around with them. You know, you just uh, IBM. IBM's got a, a logo, although I think that is Helvetica that uh, IBM has a, a logo. But there are certain things that are like a stamp, and um, you know, mm-hmm. you just went, you just went full, full run. I mean, Starbucks has, you know, the mermaid. Uh, yes. mermaid uh, built into it and uh, you, you wouldn't fool around with that but uh, then we um, got some designers from outside to come in and look at strategic coach we didn't like what they did and uh, actually our in-house designer actually did a good job and we really like our logo now and we could live with it forever but mm-hmm. it was so funny because then she having uh, been a hero to us she she tried to put herself into trouble because she says, well, now that we have this logo with this different type that I've used, then all of our print materials um, should use this typeface. And I said, no, 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 we're going to stay with Helvetica. And, yeah. uh, and she said, well, you know, why don't we do something unique? Everybody uses Helvetica. Uh. And I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I said, uh, uh, you said two things to me. Uh, you you used two sentences. The last one, uh, I'd like you to repeat the last sentence that you told me. And, you, and what, she said, what? Everybody uses Helvetica? I said, yeah, I, I just want you to go away for a day and just think that through it as deeply as you can and come back what you think tomorrow. And, <laughs> and, and, and I said, of course I use it because it works. And I said, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's something. And that's, yeah. you know, there's something, I and the, one of the um, things that I've also, like, overlaid is uh, Pantone has their, um, every year for 30, 40 years or so now, they've had their color of the year. And mm-hmm. I've thought about that as a way of, as just a, a, a built-in, like, style guide type of situation that you could use Helvetica as the, the font uh, size and with a, your base uh, set of colors and then to contemporize or to make things, uh, mm-hmm. you know, current to use the Pantone color of the year palette for that year as a. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as long as you hold one thing as your anchor, right? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, and you uh, so just use Helvetica as an anchor, yeah. and then you can introduce um, a variety of new things on an ongoing basis, and you yes. don't do yourself any harm. Yes, that's and, right. Uh, you know, and I've noticed that we have gone through periods, uh, you know, where orange is a really big thing, and we use a lot of orange, and then mm-hmm. there's a you know, uh, there's, um, uh, you know, a bluish green color yeah. that has appeared on, the, you know, yeah. on the uh, sideline and everything else. And you can use them for accents and tints and everything like That's that. That's exactly but right. To, but you have to pay attention to where the center of this is. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, so the I think the Pantone color of the year this year is coral. And so you're starting to see that... Uh, everywhere it's um, you know it's what really struck me about this as i'm at the andaz um resort in scottsdale which is very where is that where is that by the way i don't know where that is um i don't know what to tell you dan other than scottsdale it's i don't i don't have as much as i come to phoenix i have zero like spatial awareness of where it all uh-huh. is i just know what's it near is it near is it near anything um I wasn't is really paying attention. Old, it's, old Scottsdale? Is it near old no, Scottsdale it's or? more over towards um, um uh, you know, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry, I don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't really my whole everything about it is I you know, I know where uh my, my the only places I am when I'm here is at Joe's office in Tempe. 
And yeah. uh, the Hen the Henry is my favorite. Yeah, I know the Henry restaurant in Scottsdale. Yeah. Is and it near near the Henry or Joe's? <laughs> it's about it's about uh, it's east of the uh, sorry west of the Henry, as right. which is north of Joe's office. So it's like yeah. a triangle uh, to get from yeah. So it's almost straight west from the uh, from the Henry. Okay, and on about the same A N D A. D-A-Z? Yeah, that's yes. right. So it's on. Uh, it would be on Camelback Avenue then. Probably. Near there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So there. So, uh, but it's it's a beautiful, you know, property all spread out with, uh, you know, bungalows or uh, casitas, kind of um, yeah. the way it's uh, spread out. The grounds are really attention to detail like everything you know they've got the gravel um the fine gravel which is raked like perfectly lined you know so everything about it the grass is at the perfect level and just the right green and the trees and then you know colorful chairs all throughout it's just it's it's a design led um environment you know everything yeah, it's about really it. interesting you know um just speaking about scottsdale and design for example um you know the uh phoenician is you know is uh, described as you know one of scottsdale's leading hotels and i've stayed uh-huh. there two or three times Yes, and me too. I always find the experience really jarring when I go there because uh-huh. from a design standpoint, they just never really got it together. It looked like they were right. You know, they were they were digging a tunnel with three different teams and then right. uh, you know and, uh, <laughs> the three different parts of the tunnel didn't uh, actually link up with each other. Right. And um and I got uh, I've always had this sense that uh, the rooms uh, Everything about it, uh, uh, they had all these different teams, and they there was no, one there was no master planner in charge, and number two they they didn't have many meetings, you know they didn't really compare their their work, and uh, on the other hand, the Biltmore, which is one of the older hotels, you know the older hotels, but they had uh, people in from the Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, you know, they, Frank Lloyd Wright had a, a, a whole design company and, uh, in uh, Phoenix, and they brought yeah. him over. And that's, that's a very distinctive uh, early 20th century style. Yes. And, and, and it's really well put together. And even though they're using a very, very old architectural style, they've upgraded it. But there's a resonance to ever, almost everything that they've done there. And I really pick up on that. You know, things that fit together, they don't fit together. And uh, yeah, and uh, I couldn't tell you exactly why, but it just kind of says, you know, the words don't match the tune here. You know, they're right. They're, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. But uh, this place where you're staying, obviously, it uh, it um, gives you pleasure. It does, and I think that's the that's I you know I, I start to recognize like a lot of the things that we um, that we both enjoy the, the environments that we both frequent yeah. and enjoy are are very much um, design led. It's it's something about that, um, and so what I was the reason I. I brought that up is I'm kind of looking at that and reconciling with the, with the 80% approach and what the, um, you know, the, the balance of that and what's the counter to, you know, the, the next level of the, the 80%. I don't, I don't, I guess that's kind of the thing, you know, is what's the, well, how, a, how, how do you I, think I, about those well, kinds of things? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, here's, uh, here's something, uh, you know, that I've noticed in some of the 
let's say the self-improvement organizations, because I guess in the broadest sense, that's really what the, the industry, the strategic coaches, and we're in the you know uh, coaching yeah. self self improvement um, organization. And I've gone to um, other conferences where there was an attempt to made to have all the staff and team member uh, team members who are involved with the organization sponsoring organization to all dress the same. Men and women, they all dress mm-hmm. the same. And usually, you know, it's uh, usually it's black, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, they they they, they black, you know, black, and the slacks and t-shirts, or sometimes yeah. they have, sometimes they have uh, blazers or something like that. And uh, personally, I find that a little jarring. Uh, mm-hmm. of, uh, uh, it seems a. Um, it, it seems that you've crossed the line from design into conformity. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and so we tell people, you know, we have a dress code, for, uh, you know, workshop day dress code. And, uh, you know, and it's uh, um, the women that basically worked it out in the company. They're, first of all, they're the majority. And then they kind of let the men know how the men have to show up, you know, and so you you can't show up in, in jeans on a front stage day, you know, and uh, you can't wear sneakers on a front stage day, you know, and you can't wear t-shirts on a front stage day. You know, you've got to, you got to dress up a little bit, you know, not, mm-hmm. not formal, not formal, but casual, you know, but, um, you know, business, business casual, um, I guess that's what they call it. So that would be a thing where I would never want to, um, show up at a strategic coach event where there was some sort of um, everybody's wearing a uniform or something yeah, right yeah no no yeah i just i just i just don't like that you know and uh, mm-hmm. anyway but on the other hand how they treat how everybody gets treated we have a whole bunch of rules about how people are greeted how they're treated how they're responded to throughout the day so i put a lot of emphasis on um what i would say a constant high level uh first class approach to um how how people are uh, you know engaged with when they come yes. when they come to our workshops yeah uh huh yeah, so that would be where we, uh, we would put all of our emphasis, and then the materials. You know, the materials. Uh, uh, we try to have a good design sense about the materials. Yeah, both the content and the design. I mean, the content. It's amazing how sometimes the, um, yeah, the content has to be. Uh, packaged in the right design mm-hmm. in the right framework in order to really get that attention. I'm starting to see it now as you start, you see the, um, why it all makes sense. You know, when you think about the, um, the premium, it's certainly a shortcut for a peep. I mean, it's, um, if you look at the, you know, the something really looks great, that makes people feel confident about something other than uh, if it doesn't look great. Yeah, no matter what, I, if the content is, is great, it's not going to um, maybe shine through as much as it would if it were packaged really nicely too. I, th- I think the uh, one thing is that um, uh, it's it's one of those um, things like, Dean, you go to movies a lot. And if in the movie, uh, and they have musical soundtracks, the you know, vast yes. majority of movies have musical soundtracks. And if you're sitting in the middle of the movie and you're saying, boy, the soundtrack's really good on this, um, it's probably not a very good movie. Because mm, you're paying attention to the music the more than the yeah, yeah 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 and I I think that that I would use that saying uh, if they're if the clients are noticing how you package this um, rather than 
they're really into their own thinking about their businesses and everything else, um, probably you've kind of failed with your, your design and your packaging. Mm. I don't know. It's yeah. just a th- uh, it's just a thought uh, because I, uh, you, you kind of want them, um, kind of into their own world and you're, you're, you've, you've, protected them you've created a space in which they can just be completely comfortable with looking at their own experience and you know communicating with the other clients and everything else i know some people come in and they're immediately using their iphone to photograph how we're doing what we're doing and everything else and, yes uh, you know and we never give them any you know we never give them any trouble about that um uh, but um you know, or maybe they're just you know, really design sensitive and, uh, you know, not everybody is. And they're just looking for examples or uh, confirming something that they they have in their own mind about how they like design their business or make improvements. Yeah, I think that's true because, you know, it's an inspiration in a lot of ways. Like when you come into uh, both Chicago and uh, Toronto, even the whole office environment, everything about the um, the experience is um, comforting. <laughs> I mean, you know, re- reassuringly expensive and design looking. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, and uh, some of it is, uh, you know, I mean, for right from the beginning, you got certain principles, but then there's lots of trial and error as you go along. You know, I mean, we've been through a lot of renovations in both our hotels because we had smaller space years ago and we've gradually expanded. So every time you expand, you get a chance to um, upgrade your design sense and uh, yes you know that's true of us period you know humans period if it's important to you you get better as you go along yes Mm -hmm. agreed Mm -hmm. so that was i thought uh, that was an interesting thing uh, can i ask you a question you've asked me about it uh yeah so let 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 me ask you uh why um what i'll just ask you the question the importance of the mckinsey study right now for you would be looking for something to the future. So what are you thinking Thinking there that uh, perhaps this is um, a possibility for, you know, a jump uh, of some sort in how you're presenting yourself? Yeah, I think that's really the, um, that's really the thing is that our, I would say that the, the content um, that we have is really, is great. I feel a hundred percent about all of that. And the, um, I, I see lots of opportunity for us in a unified, um, you know, experience kind of design. And that's, uh, that's what has my, that's what has my attention, um, right now as the biggest opportunity for us, you know, and so that's where I'm observing and looking um, at these. And it requires more than, I think, the um, 80% approach in a way. Yeah. Where it's all there. Like you, uh, you ha- I think this is like connecting the, the dots for people. This is another layer of the, um, the 80%. Like I think you're, you're uh, you know, it's an interesting thing that um, it's another layer on top. I think of the uh, of the eighty percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not quite seeing the connection there. Uh, the eighty percent. Well, uh, so I think that when you know, looking at the. Um, I guess what it, I look at when things are like a minimum viable um, um, approach, a minimum viable uh, product kind of thing versus now taking that and doing another layer on top of that, that would be a, um, 
uh, that would make it 80% better even, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's where I think that we're, that that's what I have. Uh, that's what I've been thinking about our processes or our um, environment. And so much of that now is at the stage where there's going to be, it's going to be the key that unlocks other um, expansion opportunities for us in terms of right now, the um, I would look at what we do as, strategic coach when you were the only coach yes where you were doing the workshop like i'm doing all the breakthrough blueprint workshops and i'm doing the um email mastery uh, uh program and our go go agent um things and in order to uh unlock the ability to have other people uh do those it's going to require a a layer of almost that the materials uh, and the system sort of allows somebody else to, to facilitate that. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, where, and, that's what has my attention right now. Like yeah. looking at and the I, next and, 25 years. And, and what you're saying is that you wouldn't start with, you have to have a black, a uh, baseball cap, black uh, sweatshirt, a white pair of shorts, and then that that probably wouldn't be the proper um, place where you would start expanding yourself. Exactly. <laughs> 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 that the uh, not that that's not that, important. That, that's iconic, though, and uh, you know it is absolutely yeah. for yeah. yeah. Um, and so the whole, but I do look at the, um, you know, that's where we're kind of going to the um, eight profit activators layering on the, the thinking tools and the kind of uh, workshop ability of them, you know, that some mm -hmm. have to facilitate um, something as opposed to it being um, time with me to to get the bring and deliver the insights for people. Yeah, I mean the uh, uh probably a mindset scorecard would be a starting point where I would is that there's the content, you know, yes. that, you, that you have and uh but it's actually the mindset of the person providing the content where I would start for you know where there people you were really you know, they, you would feel, um, you know, and the best test is a workshop, a, you know, a, um, a breakthrough blueprint workshop is being given. You're not there and you're feeling completely comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Um, you, then you would say, what makes me feel completely comfortable? But I would not be worried at all about the presentation because I, you know, I mean, I have 15 coaches and every year, um, you know, this year, for example, we'll have 500 workshop days. So it's essentially yes. 125 groups. Well, I mm -hmm. have, um, I have 48 of those days and the other coaches have 450 or so. Right. Them. And, um, and this started in 1995. So we're, you know, we're almost pushing quarter of a century of other coaches coaching coaching the workshop and i've never once been in the room when one of my other coaches is coaching the, uh, coaching the program mm -hmm. and i've never watched uh, any videos of them coaching and i've never mm -hmm. listened to any audios of them coaching and um i have a team who knows what a workshop looks like i have a team that selects you know, they interview and select the coaches, they train the coaches, and they um, manage the coaches, you know, when they're in the workshop. And we have a number, and the number is, uh, first of all, how many people sign up for the workshop, you know? And um, and the other second thing is how many renew on an ongoing basis into extra years of the program. So we use that number as the indicator of what the coaches doing a good job or not mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah 
But the whole point is, my feeling is, if it's really going to do the job of extending me out into the world, um, I can't be there as a rescuer once it starts. Uh, so right. There's no, I, I can't intervene. I've never intervened at all in the process of the other coaches. Right. And I imagine that's what um, Gino and Mark had to uh, go through. Yeah. Too. Yeah. To, Same thing. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they have two hundred and fifty. I mean, I mean, right. they've gone way bigger than, way bigger than than we are. But I could yeah. tell. I I was at their conference where I spoke, and the first hour, on the first day before I went on, they had an hour where um, the tables all discussed among themselves what their biggest insights were of the past year, and then they selected one person from the table and they all stood up, you know, about 25, 30 people, you know, they had to talk quickly. Uh, And I was enormously impressed with the kind of um, discipline and uniformity uh, that seemed to come across with everybody talking, you know, that uh, they, they were really, really well trained, you Mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and, and uh, I think Gino's got a special gift at making sure that everybody's singing from the same, you know, choir book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes total sense. So that's, um, yeah, there's good benchmarks there, you know, good. Um, yeah, uh, but I think you have to uh, simply say, uh, you know, it's like a strategy circle. Uh, you have the goal is, that I can be 100% confident that all of my coaches are um, delivering the breakthrough booklet with mm-hmm. an impact. Um, and this would be the impact, and you would write down five things that would be true of uh, someone else coaching, you know, that is sort of measurable. Mm-hmm. And then you come back and say, well, what are 10 obstacles that could prevent me from feeling comfortable or feeling, uh, you know, that, um, you know, it's being delivered with a quality that matches my standards, mm-hmm. you know, and I think, uh, I think it, uh, uh, this is really good for you because, uh, you don't have to be explicitly conscious of what your standards are because they're, you have them internally, but once you're asking yourself to be extended out into the world. Now your standards have to become explicit and measurable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's the, uh, that's the thing. And that's where a lot of my, um, this is where my, you know, investable, uh, hoot up hours are uh, yes. where I'm yep. allocating a lot of them is to this, um, this type of expansion. So that's let's kind multiply, of, let's multiply Dean. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And yeah. so that's, um, yeah, that's a new and exciting, um, a new and exciting thing. Cause I don't want to expand Dean by expanding, uh, more of Dean, you know, I want to yeah. have more deans. <laughs> That's really yeah. the well expand my, the uh, the ideas and the uh, yeah. The and it's really interesting principles. because uh, you and I, I think are of one mind on this because um, I've looked at the um, you know the coaching world and you have the uh, you know and I will say I'll use uh, Tony Robbins as the road that I did not take Mm -hmm. uh, back 30 years ago, because even then you could see that there were famous, you know, there were famous platform speakers out there, um, you know, you know, who were coaching. I, you know, I mean, let's just use the word, uh, breakthrough book, um, uh, uh, breakthrough blueprint is coaching strategic coaches, coaching yes. genius network is coaching you know? Yes, and uh, abundance 360 date with destiny is coaching, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and everything else. And, you know, I think the 21st century is just this vast coaching ocean, you know, um, and where people, um, can get their future custom design for them through the, 
structures and processes that other mm-hmm. people would create. And, uh, but I looked at it and uh, I said, there's only two routes to go here. There's a fork in the road and you have to choose which route. You can base it on personality, the power of the personality, or you could base it on the power of a system that uh, is not dependent upon an individual. There and, you go. You know, and you know, I looked at Euclid, I looked at Shakespeare, I looked at Bach, I looked at mm-hmm. Madison, and I said, wasn't based on their personality. It was based on, uh, you know, it was based on that they actually put together models that other people, other people yes. could pick up. And, and millions of musicians play Bach. Millions of actors act Shakespeare. Yes. Um, you know, millions of Americans use the U.S. Constitution, and yes. every human being on the planet who wanted to build something that would uh, stay put uh, has used Euclid. You know, so I. I went the system route, and then you have to give a lot of thought that even though you're not there, um, the things that you would insist on are there. Yes. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's uh, because the things that I do share with people are all contextual and long-term. Um, yeah, they're context based. They're a framework, and that's so it lends itself completely to um, application by through other people. It's mm-hmm. not just it's not just a, a pro, not coming up with like ideas. It's applying the, a framework to a to a situation, and that's so. And that's all completely. Um, what's the right word? Um, you know, transferable. It's a systematic way mm-hmm. of, of doing it, and that that can be uh, that can be transferred. And you know, again, that there's the thing. It's the eighty percent approach of that is that in doing this now for so many years, there are things like in each of the eight profit activators that the first that the first eighty percent layer of it is going to have a tremendous impact on on any business um but then it's the next layers of it that can uh that go even further you know Mm -hmm. one thing you might uh think of here um because you've got a big vast market uh available to you with strategic coach clients yes Uh, just to say this the question you have to ask here, are there strategic coach uh, users of Breakthrough Blueprint um, who you think might make good coaches? Because, um, you know, in other words, in other words, that, um, that they've already been through your program. Yes. And would they be interested in being coaches in your system? Right. And, that, and then have strategic coach entrepreneurs as the clients in these other workshops, I think you should uh, give some thought to that. I will. Absolutely. Yeah. That's and, just, that's uh, and first I, of all, and first mm-hmm. of all, no, I'm just telling you that we would be totally open to that. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. I know that's really, and I see it completely that the people that I have had that are strategic coach, um, clients that come to the breakthrough blueprint, they, they get things faster they get things on a it because it already fits into a complementary mindset that they already have because everything that i do has been you know under that framework of um all the strategic coach um Mm -hmm. principles you know is like i'm right there with it so there's nothing contradictory or um you know, everything is completely complementary and amplified by all the the concepts in strategic coach. So they get that. Yeah, well, they're they're toilet trained. They're probably right. toilet trained. <laughs> 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 you know, they don't. Yeah, As you know, am coach, I. Yeah. You coach, coach people. You know, they they just don't pee in the plants. You know, they, right? They, 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 you know they. <laughs> <laughs> that is think, exactly that. right and so funny well we hearing. we got the you know we got the same feedback from the uh eos uh, yes. that the eos implementer said that it, when they have 
uh, strategic coach clients, in other words, the yes. companies that they're famous. It's the same yeah. thing that immediately everything moves really, really quickly with the EOS system. Yeah. Because uh, they're, uh, they're not renegade rogue entrepreneurs. You know, they, uh, they, uh, yes. Uh, I've had that conversation to- with Gino, um, too, that that's really this overlaying the breakthrough blueprint or, or, um, you know, using that as the marketing system, the operating system on top of the, the actual entrepreneurial operating system. Yeah. Yeah. I I see no, I see no contradiction whatsoever. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So anyway, um, seeing we're using one of our joy of procrastination, um, procrastination sessions here to set up a deal. You know, I mean, uh, this is the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were we recording a podcast? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> this is a recorded deal. Oh, making, is that- you know? <laughs> <laughs> and very, very uh, subtle on how you introduced this and actually hooked me on design, you know, like. You, right. You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey, you want to see my stamp collection? It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> it is, you know, what you get I'm to, a, to, a, to a, you know, you know, I'm a sucker for design talk. Oh, man. Well, I, you know, I saw it and that, um, I really get it, you know, now, I mean, it's, it's something that now there's really like no, now there's a quantifiable thing is what, oh, what yeah, is it there is. costing? Yeah. How much, um, how much are you losing by not having a design, um, led? Well, one of the, of things. Fun, yeah. you know, one of the funny, uh, stories and this goes back 30, you know, 35, 40 years is that when Apple switch over to graphic graphic user interface, which was yes. essentially the introduction of the Mac. And uh-huh. then uh, of course, um, Microsoft immediately did it, you know, and introduced, um, word, you know, like, yes. the, you windows. know, and yeah. windows, the, the yeah. windows shows you, how my, shows you which fan I was. Just yeah. Right. I don't even know. Anyway, and uh, Windows was never as good. Uh, to this day, Windows has never been as good as the Mac system. Right, um, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, and Gates would, you know, really, really agonize about this. You know, every time they did a Windows update, they go, he'd go in and he says, is it as good as Mac? And, you know, they'd have to tell him, no, it's not as good as Mac. Mm. And... Uh, but he, the one thing he didn't ever get, and Balmer, the guy who took over after him, just never got, um, was that Apple captured the market with its design. It had great technology, but what yes. it is it, and that adapting gra- graphic user in- interface was just a design strategy. You know, yes. in other words, you don't have to learn codes. You can, right. um, you know, do that. But that the first thing that uh, Gates insisted on before they ever even invented the technology, they say, what does the package look like that they bring this home in? Mm -hmm. And they've just opened the package. And what's the experience they're having of opening the package? And he started there and then he backed it all the way back to the factory and said, okay, what is it that we actually put in the package? We know they love the package. We know they love the experience of buying it. We know they love, you know, love the the design of the package. What's the actual technology? That's a total design approach to something where I, I can believe that Windows forever is, oh, we designed this brand new thing. It's like, well, let's bring in the art guys and see if they can put together, you know, some, some design Slap something around up together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and you can just see why they never did it because you could tell by Gates. I mean, Gates can talk for five minutes, and you know he's not a design guy. Right. Jobs would talk for two minutes, and you know the whole everything's about design. Yes, you're absolutely right. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. Even though it's all there. I mean, Windows, it's, but you're right. It's the, it's that ever thing. It's like, you know, Windows versus Apple, that it's really, um, the design is everything. I mean, everything about, yeah, you feel good about having something beautiful in your possession too. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I always, when I have to use, uh, you know, a windows computer, uh, it kind of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm eating cheese that was produced by the government. Yes. (laughs) Government (laughs) cheese. That's (laughs) Government produced uh, cheese, you know. Oh, you know, yes. you, you know, uh, you know that the taste can't possibly overcome your your understanding that this cheese came from the government. You know, you are right. You <laughs> yeah. are right. It's like spam. It's like spam. You know. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Anyway, this was a a departure today. Dane, this was a departure on one of our um, podcasts. Yeah, I have to tell you, I had a uh, EOS man advertising all his life had uh, gone through radio stations, advertising agencies, PR agencies. Seventy-one years old from Birmingham, Alabama, and he said, "I want you to know that I absolutely love and adore." you and Dean talking to each other on the joy of procrastination. That's so great. This is Gene from Gene from Birmingham. Oh, nice. That's good. I had the same thing. Um, you know, often people that that's the, uh, fun thing that they, they say that I love that. So yeah, yeah, slight departure, but still, you know, I think that my context of coming into it about you was thinking about the, you know, it's been something that's it kind of a procrastination. And that's why I was trying to justify, or not justify, but to explore the, you know, harmonizing it with the the 80% approach. And sometimes things take a little bit um, yeah. more. Yeah. But they're yeah. worth it. You bet. Yeah. I always enjoy it, Dan. Thank you, Dean. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye.